Good morning. A reminder, out of respect for the Mass, please turn off all cell phones and pagers. Another reminder that the Mother's Room is now located in the gathering space. Chairs have been set up behind the glass facing the church. The second maintenance collection next weekend will be for the purchase of a new lawnmower. After many years of service, the old mower has retired. Please be as generous as possible. This weekend, we celebrate Natural Family Awareness. This is a national campaign promoted through the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Secretariat for Pro-Life Activities. It is an opportunity to support married couples by focusing on the beauty of conjugal love and the gift of fertility. To learn more about this program, stop by the tables in the main entryway of the church after Mass. Today, we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass intention today is for Geraldine Landgraf. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 641, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 641. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life, for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. God says to Solomon today, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but when I was thinking about this, I was like, what if God would say that to me? What would I say? It would look something like this. I don't know. 
Um, and then, you know what's one of the first things that came to my mind? Ketchup. I mean, come on. Come on. What does ketchup have to do anything with God asking me for something? Sometimes we wouldn't even trust this. I mean, if God, I mean, really, if God said this to you, ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Is this a trick? Is this for real? You might even call one of your friends. Um, has God, has God ever asked you, you know, ask him something and he'll give it to you? Never. I don't know what to do. And we can be so earthly in our response. We can be so temporal, so transitory, so fleeting, so puny in our requests. It's incredible how such things we can ask for that are so small. And that's okay to ask for small things. Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. It's almost like a genie. That's what we can be tempted to think. It's like a genie. If I just rub hard enough, he can give me exactly what I want. And Solomon is a model to us. He's given a grace. And this is what he says. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. Another translation says, Give thy servant, therefore, an understanding mind that I may discern between good and evil. To judge your people, to distinguish right from wrong, between good and evil. Wow. What a request. Because don't you, if you look at your heart, don't you, deep down, want to know right from wrong? Don't you, deep down, want to know between good and evil? Like, we don't want to constantly live in gray and a fog. And if I just, if I just make it confusing enough for myself, I can get away with anything. If I just say everything's gray, I can do whatever I want. Give me an understanding mind, an understanding heart, that I may know right from wrong, good and evil. Good job, Solomon. And what does God say to him? He was pleased with his request. And he says, because you didn't ask for long life, riches, death of your enemies, I'll give it to you. And all these other things, too. Because when you and I ask for something, what are we ultimately wanting? We're wanting happiness. We're wanting happiness. Would a long life bring us happiness? Would riches bring us happiness? Would death to our enemies bring us happiness? I think even the movies get it right. If you see someone who's, who finally murders their enemies, finally does, do they have peace? Do they have abiding contentment, joy? Are they fully alive? Or you see someone win the lottery. What happens to their life? Are they enviable? I've actually heard that on average, they lose it all in nine months. Riches, that will give me happiness. Death to my enemies, that will give me happiness. Long life, 
That will give me happiness. And let's not be naive. Those things do contribute to happiness. But if we look deeper, if we look at what are we desiring, life, abundance, rest, peace, heaven, heaven. We can be so earthly in our desires. We can live just such short perspectives that we can miss heaven. I can do this myself. I'm barely thinking a month out, let alone heaven. But there is a profound paradox for those who grow in love of God, for those who follow Christ more profoundly. And it is this. The more you follow Christ, you will live more in the present moment. And you will think more of heaven. You will think that these are opposed to each other, but they aren't. The more I've grown in my relationship with Christ, the more I follow Christ, the more rooted I am in the present moment. And it is awesome. It's so free, it's so liberating to follow Christ, to trust His providence so much that I can live at Sunday at 9.45. Where are you? Where are you right now? Because sometimes we can be in a thousand places other than where we are. And Jesus wants to invite us into such a profound relationship that at 9.45 on Sunday, you can be here. Not just bodily, but in your soul, in your heart. And then you can receive the Eucharist in the present moment and have your life changed, opened up. Joy. Being a Christian is incredible. And I'm aware of heaven. So I can see that the littlest decisions, the smallest decisions, the decisions between right and wrong, good and evil, don't just matter on Sunday. They have an eternal consequence, an eternal impact. I want to see you rightly, Lord. I want to see you rightly. Give me an understanding mind, an understanding heart. And so we go to the Gospel, and we see a merchant, he finds a pearl. Or this man finds something in a field, and what does he have? He has vision. He can see, what I have is worth less than what's in this field. What I have is worth less than this pearl. And don't we all do that? That's just savvy business. I'll give you one dollar if you give me ten dollars. That's a good deal for me. If I can buy a product for ten dollars and sell it for thirty-five, I've got a new business. I find a pearl that's worth ten million, and to obtain it, I only have to sell one million? I'm a pretty smart guy. In other words, I'm a Christian. Because Christians see reality rightly. That Jesus is worth everything. Everything. I want to see reality rightly. But sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, you see what you're supposed to do, or you see what you're not supposed to do, and then we do it anyway. I see I'm not supposed to watch YouTube for two hours, and then I watch YouTube for two hours. It starts with one video, and now it's, and now it's 1.30 in the morning. So what gives us the power, then, 
to sell all for Jesus. What gives us the power? Grace. Grace. And where do we get grace? Where's grace communicated to me and you? The sacraments. The sacraments. Baptism. Confirmation. Holy Eucharist, preeminently. Anointing of the sick. Priesthood. Confession. But are those the only sacraments? There's one more. There's one more. Marriage. Isn't that amazing? Jesus made marriage a sacrament. He made it a means to communicate power, grace, new life, eternal things. We can think marriage so common, so ordinary, so earthly. You want to do something eternal in my marriage? Do you know who you're talking with? He wants to do something supernatural in your marriage. That's why being a Catholic is so great. It's not just you and me in this life. And that is why, and I want to say this very gently, that is why we say we don't get married in front of the justice and peace. That is why we don't get married on a beach or in a garden. Because it's not merely natural that's what's happening. Something eternal is going on. Something supernatural. Have your party in a garden. Do your honeymoon at a beach. Have a blast. But get married in church. Get married in church because it's a sacrament. And we can think sometimes that morality is like a shackle. The morality is external, always on the outside, oppressive. And what would truly make me happy, what would truly give me liberation, is if I could do whatever I want, when I want, however I want. That's what will make me happy. Have you ever met someone like that? I want to say this so kindly, so respectfully. Is that person happy? What makes us happy? When we follow God and His plan, the way He made us, when we follow God and His plan, even our bodies, we flourish. For those who love God, all things work to good. And that is why this week we're celebrating natural family planning. Because we want your marriage to flourish. I absolutely want your marriage to flourish. And Jesus is doing a work here at St. Peter's. Young couples are going to get together for friendship and for ongoing formation. And we're going to see, is this mustard seed going to grow such that every marriage, that you can find a place and receive friendship and formation? 
And so we want you to act in harmony with your body, in harmony with the way God made you. Because then you'll flourish. And so I invite you after Mass to ask for an understanding heart and to look at the resources we're offering you about natural family planning. Ask me something and I will give it to you. I want to know, Lord, right from wrong, good from evil, even in marriage. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Formed by God's holy word, let us turn to him in faithful prayer. For the Pope, all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they would proclaim the whole gospel in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and for unity in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the people of Italy and for all who are suffering from drought and fire, that they would be sent refreshing rains. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the young people in the parish, especially those in Ecuador and those attending the Steubenville Conference, that they would be drawn into a deeper friendship with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all engaged couples and newlyweds, that their relationships will be filled with good communication, respect, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Anita Dixon, James Fisher, Jerry Flum, Grace Blanchard, Margie Ricker, Larry Scheffelbein, that they would know the consoling love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Mary Parker, mother of Sally Scheffelbein, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, 
you ask us to ask you of something. And so in this Mass, we ask for an understanding heart that we may know right from wrong, good from evil, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, 828, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, 828. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, giving you th and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew's assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, the blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on, your, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 792, The Love of the Lord, 792.
pray. We have, been, we have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few brief announcements before the final blessing. After a wonderful response at last year's festival, we'll welcome back uh, a comedian to our festival for a free evening of live comedy for the family and a new opening act. The silent auction only happens thanks to our local community and you, so please bring in theme baskets and other items for our silent auction. Volunteers are always needed. Please check out Sign Up Genius to see where you can help. And don't forget to see this week's insert with highlights for the festival. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May, Almighty, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Please join in singing number 632, Father, We Thank Thee, 632. 